when you wake up, you don't know that today will be the day to change your life. Grace, please tell me what happened. What did he do to you? I've been so lonely since my divorce. I want to love somebody. I want to be loved. You need to get the hell out of this house and meet somebody. Get the CBs in the right light. And the best lighting in the room is right here. Hey. Hey. He's a beautiful. So are you. Thank you. Tell me something. I mean, I know you've had many young women. I was just wondering, why me? Shouldn't the question be, why not you? I was falling hard. I didn't even know that a man could be that perfect. Will you marry me? And it was a whirlwind. It was the happiest time of my life. That's when everything I knew shattered. Who are you talking to? Grace. They don't like being checked up on. Mr. Clyde would like to see you in the conference room right away. Okay. You have 24 hours to return the money, or you're going to jail. What? What money? Somebody got into my account. They got my passwords. Somebody has stolen my identity. I can't believe you do this to me. I can go to jail. I'm your husband. You know the laws of this state. The money's mine now. It's your fault. You made this too easy. Women your age, low-hanging fruit. the Holloway Correctional Facility where Grace Waters is being held. Something isn't adding up. Grace, where was the body? There was no body. He was gone. I just saw there's so much more to the story. If you knew something and you didn't tell the police, that's a crime, right? Her friends. Are you covering for her? Objection, Your Honor. This is unfair. It's your job to walk into that courtroom and make it fair. Don't make me go back there. So, darling, if you see the devil, won't you tell him I'm coming home? You know, what's crazy about listening to that trailer is that you think it's going to be a really just epic drama from Tyler Perry. But what we got was one of the best comedies that he's ever produced in his entire career. Welcome to back to the Chandler Burton podcast. I am your host Chandler Burton. And today we are going to be discussing something that I've actually thought about doing for a while. Um, I could never just get around to figure out how I wanted to word it or how I wanted to do the podcast. And this podcast might not be as popular um, as some of my other topics like for that I've done like video game soundtracks or like top 10 movies or those types of things. This is one kind of like, I want to see this man succeed. I really, really do. So today's podcast is going to be four ways that Tyler Perry can improve his movies. To give you a little backstory on Tyler Perry here, uh, Tyler Perry to me is actually quite an inspiration. I'll kind of tell you what I mean here. I remember it was 2009 and my dad took me to go see Medea Goes to Jail. And I had no idea what this movie was about. I didn't even know who Medea was. I didn't even know who Tyler Perry was at that time. But I remember walking out of that movie, loving that movie. And keep in mind, I was 14 when that movie came out. And again, I'm going to be 28 here um, in the next couple of months. And so re-watching that movie again, um, I like half that movie. And then the other half, I just absolutely can't stand. I love all the parts of Medea in it, but I can't stand that side plot about the hookers and the, like, the lawyers and those types of things. If you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. And it had me thinking, I was like, you know, Tyler Perry has potential. He's got a whole studio. He's got everything that you need to create a great film. Why can't he create a great film? 
to me, Tyler Perry is an inspiration. I He is an African-American filmmaker, which, of course, I am also African-American, which gives me... Um, which gives me a lot of hope to do what I want to do because I want to get into filmmaking. I want to be able to create films, not like what he's created, but like just in general, um, like create movies or create like animated shorts and those types of things. Like that's what I mainly want to do for my career. I've wanted to do that since I was really young. And so watching an African-American who pretty much came from, you know, being homeless, being abused as a child to be able, he's one of the biggest names in Hollywood, but probably for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> um, but again, overall, he is an inspiration to me, looking up to somebody who is African-American, who can create all these films and be very successful. He came from nothing, and now he has become something. And so it makes me sad when I see all of these movies, especially A Fall from Grace. Um, it really disappoints me that he just kind of does whatever he wants, just doesn't care about anything else. And we're going to talk about today, again, four ways for him to improve his films. Because I've watched a lot of his movies, my dad watches a lot of the TV shows, and from what I can tell you, there is a lot to be desired when it comes to his films and to his TV shows. So we're going to go over those here today. I actually wrote this down on my computer, all the ways that Tyler Perry can improve um, his movies and even um, his TV shows as well. So I'm just scrolling on my computer here and tip number one. This is the most, if if he's gonna, if I know he's never gonna listen to this or if anybody who wants to get into film or get into those type of things, there's one thing that I think Tyler Perry needs to do. Brother, you need to slow down. You just need to take a break slow down, go to Cancun, have, take a break, and just enjoy yourself. He posted a couple of months ago, I think it was on Instagram or Facebook, something on his social media, where he showed a huge stack of papers. And everyone's like, what, what is he talking about here? Literally, it, it shows all of the movies and shows that he has directed. And it is very impressive, to say the least, but at the same time, I think your quality of your films are going to be better if you just slow down. Again, he has so many movies on his resume, starting from Dire of a Mad Black Woman all the way up to A Fall from Grace, and that's including TV shows, and he has an animated Medea movie. He's got so much going for his studio. But you think to yourself, why is he putting out so much stuff? He's got the money. Like, he's not, like, desperate to keep putting out movies or shows to create money. I mean, he's got it. He's, he's living the life. I don't know his backstory that well. Um, but again, if he were just to slow down and maybe just do, like, a film every couple of years, I really feel like he can create a better product. It is the definition of quantity over quality. I mean, he puts out so much stuff that people kind of get lost in the moment. And when he puts out like a serious movie like Fall from Grace, it ends up being unintentionally hilarious. And I'm so sorry to say that because that was supposed to be a really heavy drama with a really serious subject matter. But you just laugh at some of the bad edits, some of the bad dialogue choices, some of the worst directing that Tyler Perry has ever done. And another problem that he has as well is that all of his movies essentially are the same. They're, it's always about a woman who's down on her luck. She meets up with a guy. The guy is super abusive. And at the end, it always works out. That's pretty much the essential of every single Tyler Perry movie. He's talked about it before, and I'm going to play a short clip for you guys, um, where he takes a lot of inspiration from his mother, because his mother was beaten by his father, or like the, the male figures in his life, it was not treated well by his mother. Um, but the thing is, all of his movies have been about this, and this clip that I'm going to play for you was posted just a little over a year ago, and he's saying that this was like the main inspiration for writing A Fall From Grace. So I'm going to play the clip for you, and then we'll be right back to discuss that. 
Writing female characters is so pivotal and so important to me because I know that where I come from, had my mother had a Medea or seen some of this stuff, what it would have meant for her. Maybe she would have found some strength in it, as, as millions of people have around the world, which is always fascinating to me. I love writing for women. I just, there's something about, I don't know what it's like for a girl child, but for a man child to see his mother being beaten and abused and not be able to jump in, protect and help her, it is debilitating for a very long time. My first 10 movies or so were all subconsciously talking about her. The women in the movie represented her and her struggle of understanding that she was worthy of love. She's worthy of a better, a better treatment. She's worthy of compassion. She's worthy of a man that sees her. So every time I'm writing a female character, every time I'm, I'm, I'm looking into their lives or peeking into those moments, I'm thinking about her. I wanted to create a world of a small town in Holloway, Virginia, one that I created. Unfortunately, it reminds me of after my mother died, everything in my life went to black and white. It was really strange, like I could be looking at bright colors but not be able to see them because something had hazed over me. And all of that was like references for this, while everything had some sort of sepia tone to it, but everything kind of fades and gets darker and darker and darker and darker as she goes until she comes out into the light. But I even had a couple of women that worked for me that found themselves being ripped off by someone. And I, I know what the pain and the devastation for them. And I also knew how much they wanted and desired love. And I felt so badly for them that I wanted to write this cautionary tale about not giving up on love, but going in with your eyes wide open. That was part of, part of the inspiration for me. Do you see what I mean? Again, if you go watch any Tyler Perry movie or any of his shows, especially his dramas like The Haves and The Haves Nots, my parents liked that show. I've seen clips of it, and man, I can already tell you it is something I would not be interested in. All I'm saying, man, is that if you were just to slow down, really work on getting a really good story, you can have those elements of like the man... Um, abusing the woman, which sounds terrible as that left my mouth, I apologize, but you can have those story elements. But what happens is if you're putting out too much stuff at one time, people are going to be lost in the static. They're going to be lost, like they're going to be like, uh, I can't tell the difference of what's what and what's what. There's like a bunch of Medea movies, like Medea's Big Family Reunion or Medea's... Um, big happy family like I couldn't honestly not tell you those movies apart the titles seem the same the plots are always the same I mean Medea's funny but that's not enough to hold the movie for me so tip number one for you Tyler Perry if you ever listen to this which I'm sure you won't is just please slow down I always I'm gonna mention Christopher Nolan here later in the episode but Christopher Nolan is a wonderful film director. Um, not all of his movies, in my opinion, work, which I actually am working on uh, my uh, Christopher Nolan collection, his movies from worst to best. I actually just got done watching The Prestige because I'd never seen that before. So I'm kind of re-watching all his movies to make a podcast about that as well. Um, so definitely keep an eye out for that. Shameless plug. <laughs> um, but the thing about Christopher Nolan is that he puts out a movie every couple of years. For example, um, he put out Dunkirk in 2017, and then he put out his movie Tenet in 2020. Um, that just kind of gives you like an example of like how that can work. It was three years in between those movies, which gave him enough time to breathe, possibly take a break. And say what you want about Tenet, after watching it a few more times, I find that a really, really good film. And not even with Christopher Nolan's, those recent films, you look at the Batman movies. The Batman Begins came out in 2005, uh, The Dark Knight came out in 2008, and The Dark Knight Rises came out in 2012. So from 2005 all the way to 2012, Christopher Nolan was able to tell, in my opinion, one of the greatest trilogies in cinematic history. Now, I'm not saying Tyler Perry has to create something like The Dark Knight, which is one of the best films ever made, in my opinion. Uh, it's one of my favorite movies ever. But I'm just saying that's an example of, like, when you take your time, you can really put out a great product. And I think time, no matter if it's through, like, heartbreak or through any trials that you go through, anything like that, I feel like time is one of the most important factors of life. And so tip number one, as I said, just slow down, brother. Just slow down. It'll be good for you. Take a little break. You deserve it. You're putting out a lot of stuff. Take that trip. I promise you, you're going to feel rejuvenated and you're going to feel better. All right. So tip number two is 
after watching all of his movies, and especially watching A Fall from Grace, I think tip number two is train a better crew. I think that would be such a great thing for Tyler Perry. I'm one of those guys in my life where I like to do things myself. Like, I, I don't really like asking for a lot of help. I don't really like asking people to do something for me when I know that I'm capable of doing it on my own. And I'm trying to humble myself and understand that everybody needs help every once in a while. Not just with like film or anything like that, but just like with life in general. And when I look at his movies, I feel like he just takes control over everything when it comes to the filming, when it comes to the directing, when it comes to the editing. I think one thing that Tyler Perry could do to really help his films is just to hire a small crew. Again, I know you got the money, brother. I know you got the money. Is to hire a small crew to teach them how to write, direct, and to edit in your style. Like Tyler Perry does things in a certain way where he does all this writing, all this editing, and does all this directing. If you were just to hire just like a couple of people, maybe out of film school, just to show him like, hey, this is how I write movies, this is how I do it, this is how I want it to get done. Obviously, that would be great because that would take the pressure off of him to focus on some other things when he's creating a film, which would be possibly the directing. He definitely needs that. He also needs better editors. There is a scene in A Fall from Grace. I'm going to mention this movie quite a few times because the movie is unfortunately unintentionally hilarious. There is a scene that takes place in a diner. These two characters are having a conversation. If you look in the background, it's not hard to find. You'll be able to see it. It's in frame. It's like right there. There is an older gentleman sitting at a diner, and literally he is eating nothing. He has a fork in his hand and he's like eating nothing. There's still food on his plate, but he's eating nothing. And then again, he picks up a cup and he drinks, but there's nothing in the cup. And you're sitting there going like, are you serious? I had to rewind it just to see if, if I was, I thought I was just, I was really tired. And so maybe I thought I missed something, but no, he has a fork and he's not eating anything and he's drinking out of a cup. And there's nothing in the cup. It's <laughs> there's nothing in there. And I'm just like, what? How could they not have caught this in post editing? Like how how I would be embarrassed. That is so embarrassing. There's also another um clip, it's like right after the diner scene, or it's like somewhere in the middle of the film, where these two characters are, I think it's the main, honestly, I didn't pay too much attention to it, I just picked up all the crappy stuff in the film, and there's a scene where these two characters are walking down the stairs, and you see the microphone at the bottom of the screen, they didn't even edit it out, it's like in camera, you can see the two mics trying to pick up their dialogue. How could they let this fly? I don't understand this. That's why I really think he needs to hire a small crew of writers and of editors just to fix those little problems. Again, I think slowing down and training a better crew is really going to help him with that as well. I also think people are too afraid to tell him no. I think that's a lot of, I think that's a big problem with his films as well. Another person that I think of where they're just afraid to say no to is Seth MacFarlane. Seth MacFarlane is the creator of Family Guy. He also directed Ted 1, Ted 2, and A Million Ways to Die in the West. Now, say what you want about those movies. I really like the first Ted. I think it's one of the best comedies. It's super funny. Um, Ted 2 is also very funny. And A Million Ways to Die in the West was definitely hit or miss when it came to the comedy. Overall, I liked it. But a big problem with those movies is that they're way too long for comedies. The first Ted is like an hour and 45 minutes. And then Ted 2 is almost two hours. And then A Million Ways to Die in the West, the, um, the theatrical cut is an hour and 56 minutes. The unrated version, which is just, you can watch like an extra 15 minutes of it. It's like two hours and 15 minutes. I think the problem with that is is people are afraid to tell Seth MacFarlane no and too afraid to tell Tyler Perry no. I feel like a lot of people are like, he's in charge, we're just going to do what he says and go from there. I really think if people could just step up and just be like, hey, maybe we should cut this part out or again, just get better editors. 
I think would be really helpful as well. I think another thing that Tyler Perry needs, and I think he may have this, and I'm not entirely sure. If not, they got to get a better one. Is that he needs a co-director. Tyler Perry writes and directs all of his films, which is not an easy thing. Um, I look at like a movie like Tropic Thunder, where Ben Stiller was the star, and he directed it. One of my favorite movies ever. And that movie worked out well. But Tyler Perry needs either to get a co-director or get a better one. There is a... There is a scene in this movie, I'm going to play it for you out of context, I'm going to play this clip, where the guy is talking about an ashtray. It's like one of the most memeable things in the film. I'm going to play it for you, and you'll see what I mean, that he needs a better editor and needs a co-director to catch this awful dialogue. He was laughing at me. You keep saying, your house. <clears throat> That marriage license says our house. It was bad enough that he watch. had taken all my mm -hmm. money, but here he was laughing. Watch. I'm watching. Ashtray. Ashtray, bitch! And he wouldn't leave. <laughs> no matter how you try to justify any of that, that shouldn't be allowed in a film. That is some awful dialogue like to the point where it's just laughable Astrid! <laughs> like that is just not okay like that is so stupid I, I can't imagine being on set being Tyler Perry after the guy's like Astrid! and Tyler Perry's like solid that was so good dude we're gonna keep that in the film I just can't imagine that and because I guess I can because they went for it and it's in the film and a fall from grace and it's so bad so again i really think if he can train a crew again maybe some people out of film school just to hire a small crew to write some write some better dialogue because people out of school are generally they've been in school for so long they really want to spread their wings and try to do something really good and if you hire somebody out of school they're going to be motivated they're going to be ready to go they're going to be excited and I think having a small film crew, better editors, and a get a co-director or a better co-director, I think will really help his films just be more watchable. Because A Fall From Grace is not supposed to be funny. It's supposed to be a very serious drama. But it's just unintentionally hilarious. And it makes me really sad that stuff like Ashtray is put into movies like this. It honestly... Oh, all right. We're going to take a musical break because I, I got to I got to calm down. Hey, guys, I hope you are enjoying the podcast so far on four ways that Tyler Perry can improve his movies. Um, as usual, we're going to take a musical break here to listen to a new song that I've been obsessed with for the past couple of weeks. The song that we're going to play for you guys here is called Nervous, and the band is called While She Sleeps. This is off their brand new album called Sleep Society, which actually just dropped uh, today. Um, it actually dropped last night at 9 o'clock, um, if you live in the Pacific Northwest. Um, so I, was, I had a chance to listen to it, and it is a great, great album, and this song is definitely a standout for me here. So if you like what you hear from this band, make sure, again, you follow them on Spotify, Apple Music, anywhere that you can stream music, buy a CD. Um, hopefully when shows come back, we can see them again. Um, but this song definitely uh, speaks a lot to me. And it's a very, very important song in my life right now. So again, this is While She Sleeps with the song Nervous. I hope you guys enjoy.
I'm nervous All right, so I had a chance to cool down because I felt like I was getting a little too heated there with giving my advice to Tyler Perry, especially after watching this hilarious movie, A Fall From Grace. Um, I hope I hope as well you guys also enjoyed the song Nervous About While She Sleeps. Um, again, that's a really important song to me. talks about anxiety, which I do struggle with. So um, I like sharing music that really impacts me. So hopefully you guys like what you heard and uh, you'll want to check out While She Sleeps. They're a great band, um, so I hope you are able to check them out. So we got two more tips here from my boy Tyler Perry on four ways that he can improve his films. This next one is not, I guess, a little bit of a tip, but I think it would make his productions a little bit better. Um, is tip number three, you got money, brother. Use it. Use that money. There's so many... There's so many scenes, especially in A Fall From Grace or any of the Tyler Perry movies, where it's just shot horribly, and it looks like a movie that he shoots looks like it belongs directly on TV. And you, you want to make sure that your product is good. You want to make sure that it's appealing to the eye. I use this example a lot, and this is not to um, degrade anybody who prefers PlayStation over Xbox or Nintendo or anything like that at all. This is just an example that I like to use. So Tyler Perry's movies, when you go see them, again, they look kind of cheap. And I, again, I know Tyler Perry has money. He's got Tyler Perry Studios. It's one of, actually one of the biggest film studios out there, believe it or not. I mean that sincerely. It's a huge company. Like, and it makes me wonder, like, you know, you look at stuff like Disney or Warner Brothers or all these other big companies that are putting out quality movies, especially Disney, of course, putting out a ton of quality stuff lately, especially with stuff like The Falcon and Winter Soldier, which, shameless plug, if you haven't seen that, great show. We've got one more episode, and I'm really excited to check it out. But then you look at some of the stuff that Tyler Perry's putting out, which he has maybe not as much as Disney or Warner Brothers, but he's got quite a bit of money. And I'm just wondering, like, why not put a little effort into your work? When, for an example, as I said, I was about to mention previously. So I've always been 
a PlayStation guy. Like, I, I've, I've always liked PlayStation. Nothing against Xbox. They've got Xbox Game Pass. Uh, they got great controllers. There's a lot of good things going for Xbox. But why do I prefer PlayStation? Um, and again, I, and just for, I know my buddy Kyle is going to be listening to this here, but I promise you I'm still getting both consoles. This is just an example that I like to use. The reason why I chose PlayStation for so long is because, um, I prefer the quality that they put out. I'm not saying Xbox doesn't have quality, but mainly stuff like the exclusive games. Like for me, that is what pushes PlayStation for me to get those, uh, to get that console, like for God of War, Uncharted, Ratchet and Clank, The Last of Us, Ghost of Tsushima. Um, there's a new game coming out called Returnal that looks really good. And when you're putting that much quality and time into a product, it draws me towards the product. And now some people may disagree with me on that and will tell me why Xbox is better or has better exclusives or better content. And that's totally totally fine and i think that's you know it's totally okay that you prefer one or the other but for me going back to the example of tyler perry is that i look at other stuff again like going back to like the falcon and winter soldier or, or the mandalorian like i would much rather watch those shows because of the quality than watch something like house of pain or the haves or have nots or the brown house whatever shows he's putting out because they actually put quality into making those shows or making these movies and if tyler perry can just put a little bit more money i guarantee that he can create a better product i would love him to see i would love to see him make like a really small like thriller drama another example that i'm going to use is a movie called memento again going back to christopher nolan memento was his second film his first big film with like warner brothers and it proved to me that you can make a movie for cheap, but it can still be great. If you haven't seen Memento, it has Guy Pearce in it. It came out in the year 2000. It is a quality, quality crime drama in regards to a man who has like short-term memory loss. And he's trying to find out who raped and murdered his wife. But he can't remember the details that were given to him over a period of time. So he has to tattoo himself, he has to write down notes, and as you're watching this, you're like, there are no special effects in this movie, there are no big action sequences, it is just a guy trying to figure out who killed his wife, but it works so well. It is such an amazing film, and I watch a movie like Memento, and I'm just like, if Tyler Perry could do something not just like Memento, but on a smaller budget, that doesn't require a lot of money just to make a tight thriller drama. I think that could really work for him here. Again, he would probably use the premise of a woman getting beaten by a guy or something like that. But give me a premise that's a little more interesting. Um, again, he has the money to make these movies. I say use some of it. Again, you're not going to go bankrupt. I promise you. I promise you with all my heart, my mind, and content you will not go bankrupt. I promise you, Tyler Perry. So tip number three for him is just put a little more money into it. I think just a little bit more will increase, um, it'll, it'll just increase it. It'll make it look better. I think that's a really good thing for him. All right. So tip number four, this is going to be the last tip here. Now this one may not be a tip, but it's more of like a gripe that I have with Tyler Perry here. I'm going to get this pulled up. So tip number four is stop taking your audience for granted. And I know that sounds a little harsh and I know it sounds a little bit mean, but I'll kind of explain what I mean here. As an African-American man, I go to these movies with my dad usually, because my dad and I, when we could go see movies, happy that movie theaters are opening back up in my area. But when we would go see these Tyler Perry movies, theater would, and we'd buy tickets online, theater would almost be sold out, completely sold out. We go in there and it's just a bunch of African American people. And so I feel like Tyler Perry, like, I feel like he knows like, Hey, I know that black people are going to buy tickets to my movie. So I'm just going to put something out there and I'll make my money back because I know people are going to go see it. I don't think that's fair for anybody who's a fan of Tyler Perry. My mom is white 
and my dad is black, and they are both fans of Tyler Perry. As I mentioned, they love that show, The Haves and The Have Nots. They watched it like all the time. I don't know if it's still on anymore, but they used to watch it all the time whenever it come on. And so there are fans of Tyler Perry of different races out there. So I feel like he just puts out a product of like, yeah, I'll just throw it out there because I know the African-American audience is going to go see it. And I think I'll just make my money back. That's going to be a problem because I've read some of the reviews and I've seen the Reddit posts for this movie, A Fall from Grace. And even your African-American fans are seeing how bad this movie is. A Fall from Grace was shot in five days. That's not a joke. I, I saw an interview where they talked about it. Yeah, it was shot five days. And obviously you can shoot a movie in really quick. For an example, the movie Get Out, which Get Out, again, Get Out was a smaller movie, which did not need a huge budget, but impacted me in ways that will change me as a film lover forever. Get Out is one of those movies that truly inspired me to want to get into film. And that was a recent movie. That movie was only like a little over four years old. A movie can be shot quick. Get Out was shot in like 40 days. But five days to shoot this film? Come on, man. Come on. Again, even your African-American audience is like, yeah, this is bad. This is really, really bad. And I don't know how... It's only on Netflix. I don't know how Netflix works. I don't know if you play it and Tyler Perry gets paid right away. You can just shut it off. But let me tell you, man. It's, uh, it's one of those things where I really wish he would stop taking his audience for granted. I don't know if he does, but it seems like he is with all the stuff he's putting out with it's just lazy. It's just lazy. As a film as a want want to be a filmmaker one day, as I said, Tyler Perry has inspired me to be an African American filmmaker. And I think that's a really important thing for me because it's hard right now, especially with, you know, at, with George Floyd and all like this hate going around sometimes it's hard for me to want to go out in public and I'm just afraid of people are going to say and people tell me that I can't follow my dreams because I'm black and to me that's really really hard but again I look at someone like Tyler Perry who rose again he was abused as a child and all this other stuff that he went through and he's made a name for himself maybe not for the right reasons because his movies are unfortunately hilarious but he has made a name for himself. And that's one of the only ways that he truly inspires me. Not so much as films, but him being an African-American filmmaker. And so the reason why I wanted to do this podcast is because, again, I want people to understand that I don't hate Tyler Perry. Um, when he's in other movies, like he was in Star Trek, he was actually pretty good. Like he was getting, he's in a new movie with Angelina Jolie that's coming out here next month. And he looks like he's going to be decent at it. Again, if he were just to take the time to make a really good film, like a couple of years, like now that Fall From Grace came out about a year ago, just take a few more years off, really plan. Again, I really want to see a small movie, like like kind of like Memento or something on a smaller scale to see what he can do with that. If he, again, if those tips that I that I mentioned, I really think would help Tyler Perry in his films because I am a fan of Tyler Perry. Unfortunately, it's for me to laugh at most of his films because his non-comedies are hilarious and his comedies are kind of so-so. But I really think he does have potential. And I know he's been doing this for a while. And I know that he has the chops to do it. I just want to see him make that one good film to really push himself over the edge so he could stop being the laughing stock of Hollywood. I mean, he really is. And I hope the best for him. And I hope his next film is a lot better than A Fall From Grace. Because let me tell you, I fell flat on my face watching the film. It's one of the worst movies I've ever seen. And it's really, really upsetting that it is one of the worst movies ever to put out on Netflix or anywhere for people to watch. So that is my podcast episode today. Four ways that Tyler Perry can improve his films. Again, I want to thank you guys for listening to the Chandler Burton podcast. Again, I now have a social, I have more social media accounts. If you want to follow me on Twitch, it's twitch.tv uh, .tv slash black dude 19. Again, that's B L A C K D O O D E 19. 
or I do now have a YouTube channel where I am uploading my podcast episodes too as well, also with reaction videos and live streams from my Twitch. And that is under the name Chandler Burton Entertainment. Just Chandler Burton Entertainment. I'm wearing a gray shirt with a big old smile on my face. There's no way that you can't find it. If you all want to subscribe to that channel, uh, that would be fantastic. And that does go a long way. Um, again, tune in next time. My next episode is going to be ranking up the Christopher Nolan films from my personal favorite to my least favorite. But until then, thanks again for listening to the Chandler Burton Podcast. And I hope you all take care.